Objective 1.14b, explain how the energy contained in food can be measured using calorimetry. Now, food has a total energy content dependent on the amount of carbohydrate, fat, and protein in it. And we measure this energy content in the food in something called kilojoules. Now, what scientists could do is burn the food in something called a calorimeter, and that then can work out how much energy is in the food. A simple version of this can be done in the lab. What you do is you weigh a food sample and you place it on the end of something called a mounted needle. You then put 20 centimeters cubed of water into a boiling tube and you measure the temperature. Then you set fire to the food, probably using a Bunsen burner, and hold it under that boiling tube. And as the food burns, all the energy gets converted to heat and some to light, but that heat is used to heat up the water. And then you check how much the water has heated up uh, by, in terms of degrees Celsius, at the end of the experiment. And then you can use a little equation because we actually know that in order to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree C, it takes 4.2 joules of energy. And we also know that one centimeter cubed of water has a mass of one gram. So remember we had 20 centimeters cubed in this. We had 20 grams of water in our test tube. And therefore we can use the following equation to work out the energy. We do the change in temperature times 20 because uh, that's how much uh, mass of water we had, times 4.2, and divide that by the mass of food in grams. And that will then tell us how much energy is in that food. Now, in terms of an experiment, uh, when you evaluate this, you realize it's not a particularly accurate experiment. Remember, accuracy is a measure of how close you are to the true value. Now, if you look at the uh, pack of food that you are burning, it will tell you how much energy is in the, the food per 100 grams, and you can work out how much is in it per gram, and you'll see that your result is a long way off what is written on the back of that packet. Uh, so it's not a very accurate experiment. And if we uh, look at that, that's probably because of a few reasons. Heat is lost to all the surroundings, not all the heat goes into that test tube, and heat goes into the metal of the mounted needle as well. Uh, the food also takes a while to set on fire in the Bunsen burner and that energy is getting wasted. Energy gets lost as light. Uh, the water isn't mixed around to make the, the energy dispersal even. And the food is undergoing incomplete combustion when it burns uh, in, in the air. So there's loads of reasons why we're losing energy and we're not collecting it all in that test tube and therefore it's not a very accurate result. We can improve the apparatus though. We can use something uh, like this, which is called a bomb calorimeter, and that will give us much more accurate results. It gets around some of those issues that I've just mentioned because the food is surrounded entirely by water, so it can't be lost to the surroundings. The water gets stirred to evenly distribute the heat. The food is ignited via wires rather than burning it in a Bunsen burner, and it's also burnt in auction to get more complete combustion. So it's a much more accurate way of collecting that data.